to go uh, for just a brief minute to go. Uh, well, some of you are gonna have to go back real far. I don't even. I think they had school back then. But how many of you can go back and and think of grade school or or high school? And as you do, um, how many of you remember uh, what it was like to have a, a substitute teacher? Some of y'all remember that. I don't know what it was about having a, a substitute teacher, but it was just something that when you, I mean, you heard, hey, we're going to have a sub today. Well, okay, that's it. I'm not doing any work. Before I go to, before I go to that class, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop and I'm going to spend all my common sense buying chocolate and, 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 and Coke and I'm just going to lose my mind when I get in there. <laughs> Alan Hardy knows. I can see it on his face. <laughs> Somewhere out there, there's some people that used to be substitute teachers until Alan showed up. <laughs> substitute teachers. The definition of the word substitute, <clears throat> excuse me, a person or a thing acting or serving in place of another. I just want to make sure you understand the concept of substitute. That would be your teacher's not there, and someone else comes along as a substitute. They act in their place. They're there in, in place of your teacher. And as we talk about that this morning, the word substitute, we're going to talk about substitute, but I'm not talking about a substitute teacher anymore. I'm talking about a, a substitute Savior, a substitute who would be our Savior, someone who took our place so that we might have eternal life, someone who took our place so that we might have a, a relationship with God. Let me read that, that definition again before we go uh, further. Uh, a person or thing acting or serving in place of another. Now I pray that, that, that God will keep that and you'll think of that concept as we, as we talk today. Uh, it's the Easter season. Easter will be here in just a few weeks and as we, we think about Easter, Easter uh, we think about the, the death, burial, and, and resurrection of Christ. Uh, we should be thinking about that all the time, amen? If you're here today as we talk about the, the substitute that, that Jesus was for you and I, I pray that if you're here today and, and you already have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I, I hope that, that God sets a brand new fire in you today. I hope that you realize the substitute that, that Jesus was as he died in your place. And if you're here today and, and you don't know Jesus, maybe you've been around church, you've been to church, you've heard about all this stuff, but you've never said yes to Jesus Christ, I pray today that you understand there's a God who loves you. A God who loves you enough that he sent his son Jesus to be the substitute for you to die in your place. And we're going to talk about that. Again, the definition, uh, a, de a person or thing acting or serving in place of another. And as we do this this morning, as we talk about it, it's going to be a little different. <clears throat> we're really going to talk about one key verse today. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, For Christ also died for sins once for all the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in spirit. I tell you, there is the, the gospel summarized right there in, in, in one verse of scripture is the entire gospel. When we look at that and we see where it says the, the just for the unjust, understand this morning that the unjust, that's me and you. The Bible says that we're all sinners. It says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are the, the unjust. It says that there's none righteous, no, not one. But that verse of Scripture there, it says the just for the unjust. The just, there's only one. That was Jesus. Jesus was a substitute for you and I. Jesus is the just who came and, and gave his life for you and I, the, the un. Just. Now I know as uh, <clears throat> anytime we get to, to talking about God and, and, and salvation, we begin to, to, to question. And a lot of people will, and maybe you're, you're new to, to your relationship with God, and, and maybe you just don't understand. One of the things that, that people will bring up and they say, well, if God loved us enough to, to sin Jesus to, to die on the cross for us and all that. If he loved us that much, why didn't he just forget about our sins? Why didn't he just say, well, everybody's saved, everybody goes to heaven? Well, he made a way for that to happen. But you see, God is, God is holy. 
And because God is a, is a holy good, a holy God, he can't overlook the consequences of, of sin. Somebody has to take responsibility for the sin that, that you and I commit. The sin that has been committed by the world. So again, God is a, is a holy God, and, and he's not going to just overlook that. Take that and, and compare that to our judicial system today, and there's people in here that know a, a lot more about it than me, but, but I know that, that it is known that if a, if a judge has someone before him, maybe they're guilty of, of rape and murder and, and other kinds of crimes, and that judge has them before them, and they, they know that, that they're guilty of those crimes, and they say, well, you know what, I know they're guilty, but not guilty. We're just going to forget about all that. When that judge does that, that judge just took the guilt of all those crimes upon himself. He's now responsible because he overlooked all that. And understand this morning, as, as we go back the other way with that, you say, well, I know God's holy, but God is love. So if God loves us enough, then God ought to take care of all that. Well, you know what God did? God loved us enough to make a way to have payment for our sins, and yet to retain his holiness in that he didn't forget about the consequences of our sin. The Bible says that the, 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 the payment, the wages of sin, is death. A separation from God. That means that we, because we're sinners, we said that a while ago, we're all sinners. We can't have anything to, to do with God. But God loved us enough to, that, to know that, that someone had to take the punishment for our sins. That's where we see the just for the unjust. Jesus took upon himself the punishment for our sins. So God is not only holy, he's a loving God, that he loved us enough that, that he would send his son Jesus as a substitute. A substitute in our place to die for us. I tell you, that's a, that's a big deal this morning. See, sometimes we get, we get caught up in, we even, maybe we even think about the death, burial, and resurrection. We think about Christmas and that precious baby Jesus. But do we stop and think about what all that means? God loved us enough that he took his only begotten son, Jesus, the just for the unjust. He sent Jesus to the cross for, for you and I. That no matter how bad we think we are, or even how good we think we are, Jesus paid the price for our sins. Now, God began to, to teach us some time ago um, about this whole substitute thing. Maybe some of you have heard of, of Abraham. Some of y'all are singing, Father Abraham. Come on, Clay. Okay, he won't sing with me. We're not going to sing it. <clears throat> Father Abraham. A lot of you know that, that Abraham had a, a son named Isaac. And we see in, in Isaac's life, we see a, a time that, that takes place where we see substitution, the substitute being taught. And, and again, I hope you'll bear with me and you'll listen and you'll, this morning you'll begin to, to realize the, the substitution that, that Jesus was for you. Now, Abraham had a son. God came to him and he said, Abraham, you're, you're going to have a son. This son is going to be born, and I, God's prophesying here, your son is going to be born even when you think, and others might think, that, that your wife and, and you are, are too old to even have a child. But you're going to have a child. And his name is going to be Isaac. That name meaning laughter, and he's going to bring joy to your heart, and he's going to be a blessing to all the nations of the world. He was born a prophecy. He had a special birth. He's going to be a blessing to all nations. Kind of sounds a little bit like Jesus, right? You see, God, God, if we look at God's word, we can see Jesus from the beginning to the end. God is trying to tell us something here. And right here in this story of Isaac, as we continue to, to talk about that, and I encourage you later to go back and read it, but, but for time's sake this morning, we're, we're going to talk about the things that happened there. And I hope that you see the substitution that God was trying to teach us, e even in this story. Now, after, after Isaac is born, as God would say, and again, you can, you can look later if you're taking notes, Genesis uh, 22, 1 through 14, I'll, I'll tell you the story of, of what we're fixing to, to talk about now. But um, God says to Abraham, Abraham? Abraham says, yes, my Lord. Abraham, I want you to take Isaac, and I want you to take him out 
to the place that I'll show you. And I want you to use him as a, a burnt sacrifice. Now Abraham, I'm sure he didn't really understand. He didn't really know why God would, would tell him to, to take his son and to go and to, to do this burnt sacrifice. And I'm sure he's even saying, did, did God just tell me to, to kill my son, to sacrifice my son to him? And he said, but you know, this is God. This is God. In Hebrews later, it says that, that Abraham knew that, that God was capable of even raising him from the dead. Abraham knew that this was God, the, the creator, God who could do miracles, God who could prophesy, God who had prophesied about this son, Isaac, and the blessing that he would be, and when he would be born, and what his name would be, and it had all happened. So Abraham said, yes, God. Yes, my Lord. So he, he, he will fast forward and, and give you the, the short version, but he, he, he gets Isaac, and they, they go out, and they, they go out to where God has, has shown them. They go out to Mount Moriah. There weren't a lot of car lights there then, and I'm just seeing how many of you are paying attention. They go to this place called, called Mount Moriah where God has, has led them to. And can you imagine they're, they're unpacking at this point? They're, they're getting ready to, to go up the hill. Abraham has his, his knife that would be used for the slaughter. There's the torch, the fire that would be needed to set the fire to, to make the, the burnt sacrifice. And there's the wood. And he places the wood on, on Isaac's back and, and Isaac starts to make that trek and he's looking up the mountain with this wood on his back. Now, there's a lot of different opinions, but I, I believe with most that what God's Word teaches us here, because God was, God was showing us something. This is the same place where the temple would be built later. This is the same place where Jesus would be crucified later. So we're seeing, once again, the, the preparation of the things that would be coming. God was, was prophesying, even in what we see here. Here's Isaac, and he has this wood on his back, and he's, he's starting up the hill. Folks, Jesus carried wood on his back. He carried an old wooden cross on his back up that same hill for you and I to be a substitute to take the place for us. So they're going, they're going up the hill and, and, and they're going up and, and Isaac's just, you know, it's like, I don't know what's going on here. He said, Father, and he's talking to, to Abraham. Father, I, I don't really understand. I, I see your knife and I, I see the torch and, and the wood, but Father, where is, where's the sacrifice? Ooh, and then Abraham said probably one of the most awesome things in the whole Bible when he said, God will provide a sacrifice for himself. God will provide a sacrifice for himself. And if you know this story, you know that he did. Now they get up there to the, to the top of the hill and, and, and they're preparing and, and, and it, it, it tells that there comes a, a, a time that that Abraham has his knife out to make the sacrifice. So in preparation of that, we can only imagine that, that he would have, he would have <coughs> had, had ropes to, to tie Isaac's hands up. And you know, you can, you can just imagine that knowing what was going on, figuring out at some point before he had, had become bound, Isaac had figured out what was going on. But Isaac said, okay, I trust you, Father. <laughs> Your will be done today. So Isaac sticks his hands out there, and, and Abraham ties them up. Woo, do you remember Jesus saying something like that? Jesus said, nobody takes my life from me, but I'll lay it down. You see, Jesus did that because he wanted to follow the will of the Father. So Isaac's been tied up now, and, and Isaac is, is there, and, and, and Abraham is he's fighting back the tears. I know some of y'all in here have children, and I know you love them. Ooh, I pray you love God as much as Abraham did. That's a lot of love. Because right there, here is, here is Isaac laid out in front of him, and Abraham takes that knife. And as he raises that knife, prepared to do what God has called him to do, an angel of the Lord speaks out. And he says, Abraham, Abraham, don't harm him. 
And Abraham stops. And the angel of the Lord talks to him and says, you've been so obedient and you've done what God has, has called you to do. And, and now the Lord has provided because Abraham looks over and, and, and there's a ram with his horns caught up. Caught up in the brush. He can't get away. You know, I can just imagine there was some, some thorns in that brush. Maybe a crown of thorns. On that substitute sacrifice that would take Isaac's place there. That would take his death. So can you imagine Abraham's delight in his heart? He's probably not able to hold back the tears anymore. As he, he begins to, to untie Isaac. I believe at this point Isaac's probably got some tears rolling out of his eyes because they've seen the miracle that God is, that God did provide. And as they, they untie and they, they go over and they, they get this, this ram and they bring this ram over and they do as, as God had, had called them to do and they, they make that sacrifice. God provided a sacrifice. God provided a substitute for himself that day. This ram caught in the, in the thicket as they shed that, that lamb's blood. They made a sacrifice to God. God was teaching them something and God was teaching us something. God was teaching us about substitution, about a real substitute who would eventually come that would be the only substitute that would ever be needed. Isaac was able to be spared that day by the blood of that lamb, this ram that, they, that, that had been provided there by God. And understand today, no, that's not coincidental that that ram just happened to show up there. You can just picture it as, as Isaac and, and Abraham are headed up this side and they're toting that wood and they're toting their stuff. And they're on the other side. There's that, that ram headed up the hill. You see, God placed him there. God placed that, that sacrifice. God provided God goes on to, to teach us about substitution. The Passover. You all have heard of the, the Passover lamb. Substitution. God was prepared to, to, to carry out against the enemy of, of God's people. The, the firstborn of all their children, the firstborn male, would, would be killed. But God said to protect you and, and, and to protect your families and to protect your, your firstborn. To kill a lamb. And to take the blood of that lamb and to, to put it over the, the top of the door in your house. And you'll be spared. You'll be spared because of the blood of the lamb. You see, that lamb's blood became a substitute, a sacrifice to take the place. God was teaching us about a substitute. A substitute that would, that would come. Today, you and I need to know that there's a lamb, a lamb who served as a, as a sacrifice for us, a lamb without spot. His name is Jesus. When we say a lamb without spot, understand they could find no wrong in Jesus, but they still crucified him. A lamb without spot, that was Jesus. Jesus. He was born of prophecy. There, there's all kinds of prophecy that, that speaks of the, the, the coming of Jesus. He was born of a, a virgin birth. He had a, a special birth. Again, we go back to Isaac's birth. The Bible is so awesome if we just take time and get in it and read it and study it. And today, God wants us to know about the, the substitute that Jesus was for us. John the Baptist knew that, that Jesus was the lamb. Was the lamb. In, in John one twenty nine. he said, the next day he saw Jesus coming to him and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This Lamb would be the substitute for you and me. This Lamb was, was Jesus. And I want you to think about that day back when, when Jesus would become a sacrifice for you and I. 
I want you to use your imagination and go back for a moment. See, this was on the same day when the priest would be over and, and he would have, they still were, were practicing the, the Passover and, and they were over and they, they had the, the lambs there, the Passover lambs, the lambs that would be slaughtered. And the priest is over there and he has his knife out and he's preparing to slaughter those lambs. And at the same time, there's Jesus. Jesus is being nailed to the cross at that same place where Isaac was, was taken, at the same time that the Passover lambs are being slaughtered, Jesus is being slaughtered. Jesus is being nailed to the cross to be the substitute for you and I. Guys, it's not coincidental. Jesus was teaching, God was teaching us about substitution. John 19.30 says, Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus is there on the cross. He's there on the cross for you and me as a substitute for you and I. And he says, Tetelestai! Which means it is finished. Jesus was there on that cross as the sacrificial lamb without spot. He did, when he said it is finished, he did everything that was needed to be done to pay the price for our sins. Folks, if you're here today and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I hope that you walk out this door today inspired and reminded of the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. Jesus was placed there on that cross as a sacrifice for your sins. Again, God was showing us substitution. And if we back up a little bit, we can see some, some substitution taking place before that. Pilate. Pilate had a plan. Pilate decided that, that well, maybe he didn't want the blood of Jesus on his hands because he hadn't really found any fault in him. So there was a, a custom in that day that, that one person, it could be a really bad person, one person could be released. So there's this guy named Barabbas. You guys have heard of Barabbas? There's this guy named Barabbas, and Pilate says, well, I'll fix it up. Pilate, uh, Pilate knew that Barabbas was a really bad guy. Evil. So he goes out to the people, and he says, okay, I'll let y'all decide. You know that we, we, we'll let one go. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Barabbas? The evil one, the murderer? Or is it going to be Jesus also called the Christ. He said, who's it going to be? What are we going to do with Barabbas? And the crowd said, let him go. Let him go. And Pilate said, well, what about Jesus? And they said, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus over here, the perfect lamb without spot, was crucified in place of Barabbas. Pure evil. So we move on and we've got Jesus. We go back to, to Jesus is up there on that hill and there are three crosses and, and Jesus is on that, that middle cross. And now this is just kind of a can you only imagine moment. Imagine with me if you will that there's a soldier and he's going back to the, to the cells. He's got the keys in one hand. He's got a torch. It's dark there. And he, and he goes back and he, he opens the door to one of the cells. And he's holding his light out. And back in the corner, there's a, a terrible looking guy laying on the ground. He looks all scared. and He says, get up. And the guy on the ground says, no. No, I don't want to go. He said, get up, Barabbas. The time has come. And Barabbas says, no. No. Please, no. So the soldier goes over and he grabs Barabbas. And he takes Barabbas. He said, come on, let me show you something. And he takes him outside and he says, Barabbas, you're not going to die today. Barabbas, you're the luckiest man I've ever met. He said, Barabbas, you see up there, you see those three crosses? You see that one in the middle? That was yours. And I couldn't wait to put you up there. But you see that 
You see that guy in the middle one? He took your place. He's there instead of you. Folks, God was teaching us about substitution, about the substitute. I don't know what happened with Barabbas. I know he had an awesome opportunity to believe in Jesus Christ. But I know today that you too have an awesome opportunity to believe in Jesus Christ. You see, we go around all the time and we say that Jesus died for me. And I want you to continue to say that. But today, it's my prayer that you also leave here today saying that Jesus died instead of me. Jesus paid the price for your sins. Folks, I pray that that would inspire us to be the church. That that would inspire us to, to live for him. That that would inspire us to, to realize how much he had to love us. That he would die for us. Today, it's my, my prayer, if, if you're here today and you already know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you would be inspired by the sacrifice, the substitution of Jesus Christ. And if you're here today and, and you've never said yes to Jesus, I pray that you'll understand today that, that God loves you, but because you're a sinner, we're all sinners. We're separated from God. But God loved you so much that he didn't want you to have to pay the price for your sin. So he sent in a substitute. He sent his son, Jesus. His son, Jesus, never sinned. But yet he went to follow the Father's will. And because of his love for you, he went and he gave his life for you. Today God says, come unto me.